Uh, hi, everybody. So um, welcome to the academic open source work group meeting here in the CAS project. It's good to have you. So if you could add your name and if you're traveling next month or we have a supplemental question today, which is things you make in your air fryer that are not tater tots, you can also just include that <laughs> as well. So what are some of the things that you can make beyond tater tots? Chicken wings, vegetables, French fries. That seems kind of like a tater tot, <laughs> but not. <laughs> the long list. You have so many options. <laughs> I love it. I actually cut the list down by around eight things because it was too long to put in Slack. So if you want the rest, just uh, in Zoom, just let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, using using stolen text from illegally learned things from ChatGPT <laughs> to help improve air fryers. I'm it sounds like it's all just frozen things that you put into the air fryer and then basically unfreeze them and make them crisp. <laughs> basically. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, cool. So um, we have a few things on the agenda today. If you'd like to add anything, Richard, whenever you're here, I don't mind hearing kind of how things are going over in Sustain as well. You know what I mean? I always like to kind of keep that connection going. So if you have time or the inclination to give us an update, that would be cool. Um, I do want to let you all know that this is our last meeting of the year for this working group. Um, just because we go on about a month break in the chaos project, just over the holiday, Christmas holiday, New Year, other holidays that are occurring at that time of the year. Um, and we come back the 10th of January. So just letting you know, I think a lot of you know that, um, but we'll be back then. All right. So um, I do also want to let you know that we are, Saeed and Claire, I will be sending out a thing for the podcast just to schedule that. I don't know if we'll find a time before the end of the year. Um, just I'll send out a, a when it's good thing, but we're going to run a, a podcast just so people know, just kind of talking about things that we talk about a lot in this group here. Um, so just, you know, kind of what's what a, a university open source program office or we're thinking about open source in the academic space, why that's meaningful to a lot of people and, and how people are doing it, how they're thinking about it. So that's what's happening there. Um, and then Claire, I'm glad you're on. Did you, this next one is for you kind of, are you still planning on doing something in the afternoon? Yes, you mean okay. in Boston? Yeah, yeah, After yes. like, in the afternoon of Chaos Con that February 1st. Yes, at lunchtime. So we'll do it the same okay. as what we did last time, which is yeah. So so um we'll we'll have a, a workshop, lunchtime working workshop in the same hotel, all booked. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay. are you squared away on that or do you need a hand at all? No, no, it, it was all very smooth last year, but I'll but okay. I'll but I'll keep updated as to as as to what we're doing and, and just uh, ask folks as we go. But yeah, I, I've been keeping okay. an eye on the ChaosCon thread. Okay, 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 cool. So oh, yeah, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to discuss whether we put it into your registration form type thing rather than creating a separate one. So maybe we'll have a chat about that. Okay. Dawn, did you have a question? Oh uh, yeah. And and just to be clear, you're you're organizing that with the hotel, right? There's nothing yeah. we need to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I I mean it was like rinse and repeat on last year. Kind of another one of those, please. <laughs> Okay. Thankfully. I'm, Elizabeth, I'm guessing that was your question too. Yeah. Um, so just to clarify, Claire, you want us to, do you want us to have people opt into that or how do you want us to put that in our schedule? We, we, we had that as a separate registration form last time. So maybe I'll just take this offline and maybe have a chat with you as to what makes sense this time. Okay. Cause you know, we can, we can do either way. We can have a separate one or we can put it in yours. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. No worries. Great. And then Sean? You're muted, Sean, somehow. Still muted. You're showing us unmute. But... Okay, what about now? Can yep. you hear me? All right. Claire, last time I think we took the lunch hour because that was, quote unquote, the only open time. And I don't want to, there's no pressure, but I want you to know that we would welcome if you wanted to have a longer form discussion that we could also work that into the plan this year and and that would be perfectly great now it's like no pressure to do it. the workshops 
because that yeah. would work well yeah that, that i think that might be that might be as that might be better in fact to help people be, be more consistent for folks um so yeah so ha happy to we have the room for the entire afternoon so we can we can do because they only do it that way so uh so we can do it any which way in that respect and it would be great to have the longer discussion if people were up oh, for that um yeah great you actually have that that lunchtime room for the entire half day yeah oh okay cool they probably wouldn't let you rent it for an hour <laughs> they don't <laughs> <laughs> they don't and anyway we, we we hung around last time so they they have they have priors on us <laughs> so it's <laughs> okay uh yeah i mean i would completely like sean i'd welcome something a little bit longer if people would like to have that discussion i think there's a lot of people for example on this call there's a lot of work that's being done in europe now in this space um so longer format would be cool for me too it's it's more work to organize of course but not when people get going i think so it's just it's it's just very it's just true. an elongation of the time we have to discuss things very very <laughs> true all right cool um all right well keep us posted if you need anything don't hesitate to let us know and then Thanks. we'll just we'll just have to coordinate you with you too because if you're going to do something especially if it's something a little bit longer form to make sure that the discussion topic that we have in the morning because you're doing one of the the talks and then there's going to be a breakout discussion so i'm gonna i think i'm going to facilitate the breakouts i just want to work with you to make sure we facilitate a breakout that's going to be different than whatever you're going to do in the afternoon i don't think that we'll have any trouble looking okay. at the list of topics that one could discuss <laughs> so, okay. so yeah, yeah that, but that sounds great we'll, we'll definitely do that yeah awesome. richard richard had a question in chat about podcast funding matt uh, which I responded pithily and perhaps inappropriately. The question? I didn't know if now was the time. I just know that Don reached out to me around um, podcast funding for Chaos Podcast, which Sustain had normally helped fund. Yeah. That Sustain is recently, you know, we're down to like 15,000 or something, which is, you know, less than a year's runway for the podcast. So I was just curious, do you still need funding from us for the podcast? Are we still supporting you? Do you have your own funding for the podcast? Or has that all been resolved for you? If not, let's, uh, let's talk about it. You, uh, yeah. So actually, I mean, we we are good in terms of okay. our own support. I mean, if you want to provide support, <laughs> I will never turn down support. <laughs> but um, if you have other things that the money would be best spent on, I think we're good. It might be best spent on the sustained podcast because otherwise we'll that'll end sooner. So I was just um we, I would prefer so that. We, we have we have funds to cover like editing stuff. Right. So okay. we're all okay. So Okay. Yep. And Good. I think we we host you. So we pay the five dollars a month for you on our fireside and we're happy to keep doing that. That's like okay. change. So don't worry okay. about that. Okay, great. Cool. Right on. Cool. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, good discussion so far. Um, somebody put the Open Forum Academy Symposium on the Yeah, that's, so that's the exact same thing as the Dawn Conference. Oh, uh, that's you. Dawn. <laughs> yeah, I threw, I threw some notes in. Um, I went to the Open Forum Academy a Symposium in uh, Berlin yesterday, and it's, it's basically Open Forum Europe's academic conference and focused on, on open source. But with, with the idea of sharing more between like academic research and open source and policy with the idea of making sure that people are creating academic open source research that is helpful for the folks that are influencing and or making uh, policy. So, um, so it was a good conference. I just wanted to kind of mention it here. You can see, I put the link, you can see what the, the talks were and you can look up papers from, um, from most of the people that presented. In particular, the, the keynote was really good. Um, Julia Ferrioli and Juniper Lovato talked about the research they did with uh, Amanda Cesari that was published in the communications at the ACM, the Beyond the Repository. Um, paper that they wrote, and I would, I would just encourage you if you haven't already read that. Um, I personally think this paper should be required reading for anyone doing um, open source research, frankly, because they they talk a lot about the data and ethics and why it's important to work within the communities that that you're researching rather than um, surprising them by by using them as um, unwilling subjects, for example. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of mention that they're looking at, I was talking to, um, 
uh, talking to the folks at um, OFE and they're planning on doing it um, again next year, possibly in a different different location. So it's it's something that they're looking to do yearly. That's it. Cool. Thanks, Don. Any questions for Don? I see a couple. Oh yeah, and Richard did a podcast with those folks that he just dropped. I assume that's the link that that you just dropped into the yeah. the chat. It's I about just... their other paper that just came out. Um, just ten things you can do. I think to fund open source or something. Um, so it's it's worth listening to. We also talk about that. But I've also interviewed Julia and um, Juniper before, and then Amanda's a co-host. So, but those are just some relevant things. Um, they're awesome. They're my favorite people. Totally listen to their keynote. They're great. You're also my favorite people. Yeah, I was going to say, well, okay, I'm the second favorite now. So I. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Take a hint. Arch, Richard. Yeah, geez, I guess I'm chopped liver. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. We're all chopped liver. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, thanks, Don, for that. Um, any any questions or comments or feedback beyond what we've had so far for Don? Cool. Thanks for sharing. I just a, a yeah. question, actually, Don. Do you feel that um, there was good exchange between you know the the people who are doing academic research and the practitioners? I mean, what 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 was the composition of people in the room? Things like that. I think it was a start. It was um, definitely, I would say that there are probably more academics in the room, um, if I just had to guess, based on the people that I knew from industry that were in the room, and then probably, probably fewer people working on working on policy. But there were there were certainly a few, and there were some people. It was in Berlin, so there were people from the Sovereign Tech Fund and and groups like that as well. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a mix. I think. Um, you know, it certainly doesn't solve the problem. Um, and, and, you know, and they realize that it's, it's going to take, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's an ongoing process to get that, get that kind of collaboration. But some of the research that was presented was kind of interesting. There was one that was sort of around innovation um, and looking at um, patents and, and GitHub. And there was another one that was looking at um, entrepreneurship. So these are kinds of things that you could maybe use as, um, making the argument that open source is important when it comes to uh, policy, which was one of the one of the goals. Yeah. So full disclosure, um, I was on the planning committee and reviewed papers, so I'm trying not to disclose you know, sort of anything confidential. But I think another question I can ask without doing that is: um, Was there discussion, representation, focus on the global south? um not as m much there was there was one person there from um brazil who was talking about uh his research i don't think i don't think there was anything i don't remember anything from africa at all so not i would say certainly not much i i would say that this was um probably a little more european focused which is not surprising given the the ofe's reach I think. Okay, thanks. All right, cool. And uh, I see Anessa just put uh, a link to another talk that Amanda has done. So thanks, Anessa. All right, um, while we're kind of on the update, this is Ray3 and Richard, so if you want to speak to the things you've been typing sure uh i was just saying you know sustain continues to to rock on um we've started recording podcast videos which are cool so i have some coming up um which are new so you can watch the podcast as well as listen if you like it's interesting we just recorded one yesterday with chad uh whitaker who's the best person ever after all of you um which is really really great um there's three working groups that are really active right now. Uh, the d design one seems to just be a bit tired at the moment. If anyone wants to really contribute to that, they can. These are the three which are active. So the governance working group is working on a governance handbook. It's brand new. Uh, I've just thrown this out to the other people, but like hopefully we can start having stuff there. Um, and then that's the call that you just opened, um, Matt, for tomorrow, which is the academic working group, which is most relevant to this work. 
Um, I've had issues trying to figure out what I'm going to talk about because I don't want to be the person who decides what we talk about. I want everyone to decide what we talk about. And so I've been asking people who've been attending the academic working group, hey, what do you want to talk about in terms of sustainability for open source? And this question keeps coming up of like, I have people come to me who say, I want to make more projects sustainable, but I only have 10 minutes. I only have an hour. I only have 10 hours. What do I do? And so I was hoping to just brainstorm on that tomorrow. Um, so come to that meeting if you want to brainstorm on that particular question. It's a definitely a single um, small persona it's a small archetype it's a small problem it's not the biggest problem but it's something that's like really immediate for a lot of people who are actually going to those meetings at the moment so i was going to focus on that if we have other questions that come up i would love to talk about them um but that's pretty much the sustain check-in i don't want to take too much time saying all the things happening in sustain but i've written down and do other working group stuff um i okay. talk really fast how, how that's is okay. your how's your mapping stuff going it's going interesting um i expected a bit more speed on this from other people collaborating and that's not happening. So it's kind of falling on my shoulders and I would like to schedule more time to do that. Okay. Um, if anyone wants to help, I'm always happy to help collaborate. And uh, I think one of the things that would be most useful if people want to actually set up times with me to hack on it together. So if you want to write something and you want to take a video chat and sit and add in universities, communities like this one um, or your university, hit me up. Here's my Calendly, um, and I would love that. But this is supposed to be a resource where people can basically say, this stuff is happening. Uh, here's what OSOR is. Here's what ERSI is. Here's what USRSE is. Like all these different acronyms that we all know because we've been in the field forever that most people don't. Um, so I wanted to just make a list of that. Those are universities that have already been submitted. Um, and we have some more coming in the pipeline right now. Okay. Do people submit on GitHub? GitHub, or they email me, or they make a Google Doc and send it to me. Whatever is easiest for you. Okay. And I should make that clearer. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's not a visual ecosystem map, for which I'm sorry. There's no X that marks the spot of the treasure. Yeah, I was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> picture of the world with <laughs> little pins. I, I can work on that. I can work on that. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, Richard. Thank any, you for the time. Yeah, yeah. Any questions or comments for Richard? Respect to what he's doing at Sustain or what's happening at Sustain? Oh, I should mention Friday, we have our Sustain Together meeting at 12 Eastern, which is where we talk about any recent events happening in the Sustain world. We do this every two weeks. Um, if you want to talk about like specific news that's come up in the past few weeks, that's a great time to do it. Cool. So it happens on Friday at noon. And I can throw a link in. Yeah, throw a link in here. There's an open spot right here. All right, great. Um, well, thank you. So I wanted to spend, let's see, putting a few people on the spot. Tom, Mike, you here? You ready? <laughs> so um, last time we had spent you know, Saeed had spent a little bit of time on this model that we've been speaking to. I added a picture um, to kind of think about um, research excellence in in the university setting. So um, I've done some of the updates that kind of needed to be done from last time. So you can find that link in the minutes. Um, removing the OSPO call out, just saying functions of academic open source throughout the entire model. Um, turning some of Saeed's comments back into questions. So we're all good there. Um, and so I think Saeed had provided some, some really nice guidance through the research excellence part. Um, we had a couple other people who, and Stephanie's not gonna be able to join us today. So Tom had um, mentioned that he would like to talk a little bit about education and Mike to talk a little bit about community. So I don't know if either of, you are ready or would like to talk about the things that you were going to look a little bit more deeply into? Mike or Tom? I can, excuse me. And I apologize. I'm in a little bit of a long environment. Um, I dropped two initial thoughts on um, the first two questions in there that I can um, give a little bit of uh, background in terms of the work that I've been doing that's helpful for the group. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, and is this the right slide, the slide five? Yeah, so um, okay. um, 
at least it's funny you know um, I've been doing some work into the early for the past four or five years of course catalogs and speak with some faculty. Um, and so in terms of what I can speak to a little bit today is in relation to those first two questions. One, and, and I'm not sure if this is the appropriate thing to put into that metrics and metrics model column. Um, yeah. This, if this yeah. is right. Like, Yep. Um, but one of the things that we've, we've started to notice in terms of like how open source is used in university curriculum is um, started to notice uh, three three pretty prevalent themes that it's pretty easy to drop most of the courses that and this is this is beyond um, traditional CS courses. We're looking at the full course catalog. Uh, so this goes into articularities, um, applied to science, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we're finding there, or at least I was finding there were three kind of like larger buckets. One is an express, uh, expressly saying that an open source uh, software was essential to completing the coursework. So it was, it was spelled out as an essential need uh, beyond just Python and R. Like a lot of them mention specific open source uh, tools. Uh, the second one is that the actual focus on the course is, is software, open source software development. You know, uh, there's the, and that goes into different areas uh, and coursework in developing operating systems, database models, where it expressly says that open source is the goal. And then the third bucket that I found was kind of interesting um, in terms of how it was affecting coursework was um, kind of more of the social context of open source methodologies and how it affects things like the broader research categories. So those are some of the different, um, at least in the university curriculum, we're kind of seeing that in those different buckets. Um, at least at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and then just an initial thought on the second item uh, in terms of how the open source curriculum relates to university research. Um, so we had a lot of feedback that both proficiency in certain open source tools, but also understanding the best practices, you know, how to do how to do commits, how to do uh, PR review, uh, PR reviews, et cetera, et cetera, like that being prerequisite. Uh, for a lot of students that are, are research assistants to work with these larger research groups on faculty research, we're, we're noticing that that was also kind of happening, that a lot of these things are becoming more and more prerequisites to do that work. And finding from faculty and research was that they want to see like, where is that training happening? Where is that training working connected? So th those are some initial findings, I think. Gotcha. Um, so the, Tom, the second one, this is, the way I was hearing you talk would be like me as a faculty member or looking to hire a, a student to work with me is, and I'm trying to understand these yeah. skills, like if they're proficient in whatever tools it is that I might be using and whether or not they even understand open source in the first place or whether that's something I need to teach them. Okay. Yes, because it's, you know, where there might be an introductory software course that they can point to for like the basic CS knowledge you need to have. It's where is that kind of like relevant open source curriculum they can point to that would provide some of that training. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. That's that's good. Um, Mike, you had a comment on here as well. Do you want to speak to that just a little bit? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Tom, hearing you speak about that uh, third third bullet point, the open source methodologies as course focus, um, when you described it, pretty much uh, nailed it spot on. And I recognize, especially with the small box, you know, we need to be succinct. But one thing I was thinking about is, uh, are there things that go beyond uh, open source methodologies? Uh, so thinking about like, you know, uh, social theories or, uh, you know, maybe tangential topics like uh, legal aspects of IP licensing or uh, philosophies related to kind of this peer-to-peer -peer method of collaboration. Um, and do all those things belong in this box? I, I think I think they do. Uh, but do we also want to be like explicit about them too? Because I know, it's particularly in a lot of curriculum that I've seen, 
uh, many of these things get left out or are delegated to other parts of the curriculum that students don't really get the same exposure to, uh, particularly in computing. Um, if you want to respond and then say it, I see your hand as well. So, I I one hundred percent agree with that. I can say, I think I think also it would maybe be good to break that out. Um, I I was kind of assuming a lot of those things under that kind of third bullet, but I also see your point. I think would be good to break those into two different bullets. All right, fair. Um, thanks, Mike. Yes, yeah, Saeed. So Mike's uh, question and point raises a question for me, which is how much of this framework is trying to capture what's happening versus how much we would like to have happen, more sort of aspirational, right? Because I think, you know, I would add security to the list of things around OS education in universities that's not being addressed very well, right? So it is, it, you know, are, are we, signaling as well, these are things that should happen and there may not be metrics in place to measure them now, or are we trying to capture more? This is what we see is happening and these are the metrics that are tied to those things. And I don't have a preconceived notion about this. Uh, so I can give you a, feels like a, <laughs> not a great answer, but um, so I do think that there, I've been through this um, framework many times now, just kind of continuing to like look at the feedback. And it does look like some of the um, questions are probably things that we could take a look at now a little bit more immediately. And some certainly do seem a bit more aspirational. Um, I think if you recall last week when we were talking about research excellence, there was like that question of like, how do you go about getting, getting some of these things? Um, and there was a little bit of a pause that we'd have to think think out a little bit further. So I, I do think this framework is certainly a mix. And then I think about um, what we've been doing in the corporate OSPO space as well with a framework like this. I think it's kind of the same thing. Some are a little bit uh, more accessible and some are just going to have a, a longer runway as we try to achieve these things. Um, and it's, it's that's a good question that I'm going to ask you to hold on to towards the end of the call. I'm going to suggest that maybe we could take a look at some of these questions at different universities that we may feel like we could answer now and some that we may want to think about what that runway would look like to even get to even get there. So um, that's a good question. Um, great. Any other I really appreciate this, Tom, and, and thinking through this. Um, any other questions for Tom or just kind of reactions to this? Claire added IP implications. Can somebody put security in there as well? So I, as to not be lost. It doesn't seem like it would be lost, but. Thank you. All right. Uh, great. Sorry. Jeez. Thank you. you. <laughs> I'm like trying to be patient. <laughs> no, let me um apparently do not disturb is off, but All right. now it's on. All right, cool. <clears throat> uh thanks, Tom. Thanks for thinking through these. And are these are these things that you're trying to do at the moment right now, Tom? Sorry, my connection is bad. I, I must feel like that or not. Yeah, no problem. Are these are these the boxes that you kind of talked about today? Are these things that you're currently working on? Yeah, I'm currently working on trying to, to map and um, uh, see. I'm currently trying to map the coursework with CMO okay. to kind of see how these things are coming up. I'm also trying to see how they're connected to our different research institutes. So this is this is something I've been actively working on for one of the times. Okay. Are there other people on the call here today that are trying to address questions like these, trying to understand open source in the curriculum? Is this an issue for other folks? Hmm. 
Yeah, Mike. Um, maybe in a different way, because we have this minor, we have a lot of specific curriculum uh, targeted at open source. But because it's so focused on open source and it's kind of this opt-in, you know, minor, um, it's not necessarily well represented within, it's not integrated within existing majors or mm -hmm. undergraduates. And I think that creates a, a slight sense of precarity. Um, so when thinking about this from our perspective, uh, one of the things that we're thinking about is like, how to better integrate it. And I think that some of these questions begin to become pretty pretty useful when you know doing that analysis. So okay. in some ways, yes, but in other ways, no. Okay. Um, is there anything happening or is this on the, the map at all for folks like at Texas or Wisconsin or Stanford a little bit? No, not for us. So okay. um, I think this is an area where some of our peers are going to be way out in front of Stanford. Okay. Yeah, I think for us at the moment, we're focusing more on um, like student training programs, internships, collaborative experiences. We have a partnership actually with um, the local community college um, and they do have an internship requirement, but that's not necessarily curricular. Okay. Um, what do we know? Um, so if Stephen Jacobs isn't here, I don't think. What do we know about RIT? Because I think they might be doing a good job of this. Also, maybe um, I'm curious about Santa Cruz. Mike Nolan is RIT. Mike is our rep from, our, from RIT. Oh, hey, Mike. <laughs> Hi. Um, Angela, are you doing things at Texas in this space? Oh, yep. Yeah. We have James Howison, and he teaches uh, a course in the iSchool that's uh, open source software development. And then we are starting what's called a signature course. So signature courses are stopped by what we call taught by what we call superstar faculty to 100 lucky freshmen every year. And those are accompanied with what are called FIGs or freshman interest groups. Mm -hmm. um, so those groups actually will meet the entire four years that the students are students. And uh, we're gonna do an open source software development uh, focus. So yes, we're doing a couple of things. Okay, interesting. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, all right, cool. It's a nice conversation, thank you. Um, Mike, did you want it? did you have anything? I know that you had mentioned perhaps taking a look at some of the community stuff here. And I see that you put some stuff. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a minute since, <laughs> since I've looked at this. And I know there was some stuff in here already, and I think I put some stuff in the slide, and then I also have uh, a comment. Um, so apologies if there's a bit of disorganization here. But in terms of this first slide on slide nine, uh because there's two yeah there's two slides here um on slide nine i noticed that one of the first things i noticed was that the first two questions seem closely related in that uh they're focused kind of on um oh sorry the the first the first question is really focused on understanding Kind of like downstream impact, right? So as we're producing open source artifacts, you know, uh, how is how are they being used? Um, and and you know the community impacts of that, like are are people talking to each other and is there contribution? Uh, and then the last two questions seem to be much more focused on understanding the stability of of these artifacts uh so are they lasting a long time are they reliable and rigorous um and one of the things i was thinking is uh you know does this apply heavily to community obviously this is sort of really focused on the quality of the software and having a community is like a big impact on that but um 
I, I found myself questioning like if this really belongs in this area. And then hmm. I guess my first question to the group would be like what other folks might think about that. So my having been through this again several times, my reaction is there are just throughout all of the slides, Mike, there are a number of questions that do seem to overlap with one another. And I think we can clean that up a little bit. Um, in particular, this downstream use question, I think is something that we talked about last week with research excellence. Um, somewhere in here. Anyway. Maybe not, maybe not research excellence. Um, but I, I feel like I had seen this question before trying to understand the downstream use of the artifacts that are created from university sponsored activities. So I think that one might be able to be removed. I think when we were talking about community, it was really helping researchers or academics think about how to build community around the work that they're doing, as opposed to just taking a piece of software and, you know, throwing it over the fence. Yeah. Just putting an open source license on it and calling it good. And so how how much uh, how much support is there for actually doing the hard work sometimes that is community development work? I think that's what those two last questions were about. We're interested in that. Um, I had a consult yesterday about this, and I think it's going to come up over and over. Okay, kind of these last two questions. How do you actually su support faculty or train faculty to think about community development? Is that? I think we want to broaden it from faculty to scholars, okay. maybe. Okay, fair enough. Yep. But yeah, um, and it's a, it's kind of like a, I don't know if I'm training them. I think it's sort of like a co-pilot exploration kind of situation because I don't necessarily have the answers either, but I think we're going to figure it out in aggregate. Okay. Um, what, why, why do you care about this? Um, it's the press, it's one of the pressing questions that they, I mean, so we have a, you know, a need, we need to present a value proposition to the research community. This is one of the things they're struggling with. So, um, yeah, um, so, you know, sustaining it and growing community is, um, uh, a big deal and, um, the other thing we want to do is let people know what they're getting into because maybe they don't want to go there, right? Because the more successful they are, the more labor it is to maintain. Yes, says to somebody who has been in the chaos community for seven years now. <laughs> didn't quite, I didn't quite know back in the day. All right, those are that's fair. Um, okay, does that help, Mike, at all? At least in this for this slide. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, heavily related to these these questions that um I was asking. I, I certainly say from from our perspective, uh much of our focus is not necessarily on on training existing researchers. Well, to an extent, but um certainly we take a uh kind of an ideological view that community building requires additional labor on top of that of creating it and therefore requires additional support. So in this comment here where I'm asking about like, what about funding this type of work or staffing this type of work? Um, I'm really trying to indicate like, you know, because there's additional resources needed for both building, you know, growing and maintaining communities um, that necessarily requires additional resources to assist in that coordination. I'm going to not get this quite right, but like how are additional resources identified and secured? One of the ones that came up for us not too long ago is um, because some of our, like we have great, important, successful open source projects that are niche, um, you know, within a research community for which there may not be a colossal like commercial interest yet, or maybe ever. So, um, uh, you know, how does, um, you know, how do niche academic disciplines get to sustainability, you know, if you're not doing something that's like a, you know, a function that like IBM needs, 
like if you're not Apache or, you know, I've had the spark or something. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point, Zach. You know, um, in the chat, uh, Saeed mentioned, you know, Pose, uh, which is a great, well, I, if you get the face too, it's like, you know, a great multi-million dollar NSF grant. But for many communities, it might be, in a sense, like overkill. Um, and so how do these smaller communities, their resources differ and stuff like that? Well, one, one of the really important observations about the NSF program is the post program in particular. It's not about basic research and it's not about actually developing the open source code or project. It's specifically ecosystem, what they call ecosystem or community building. That's really rare for funders in the past. This is a fairly significant shift. Uh, and I think in some ways NSF may be leading the way, but I think other funders are watching this very closely. Um, and you know, NSF has now a vested interest in trying to identify models that will work for all these different kinds of, you know, archetypes, profiles, whatever you want to call it, which the you know, for which the answer is not you go back to the funding agency over and over again. That's that's not the answer they want for, for this particular program. Have we been seeing outcomes from POSE funding yet? I know it's relatively new. What do you mean by outcomes? Like um, uh, awards made or like impact, like visible impacts from those awards yet? Yeah. Because I think no, they- It's the latter. Impacts. The latter. No, I, I think it's way too early. Yeah. Okay. I think POSE, it's maybe two years old, three years old. It doesn't feel like it's very old. They went yet. through their second call this year. So yeah, there's only a year of funding in the bucket. Okay. But wasn't the sustain non-sustained conference in California, wasn't that post-funded? Yes. Yeah, that was actually, they didn't have outcomes in the sense of papers, but there were some really good conversations there. So I would say like, there's been outcomes, there just haven't been really clear outcomes that we can hand to say practitioners or people in academia. Yep, and I should apologize. I didn't realize there was a previous round. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so I... Yeah. I um. Mike, Mike, did you have anything on the second slide, slide uh, 10? That's, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, did I have anything on that slide? That's OK. Uh, let me read it. Well, let me let me put this out here, kind of like the, the conversation that Tom had had around education. Are there other people on this call, again, at, at CMU or at Wisconsin or at Texas, who are really interested in supporting uh, community? around projects that have you know started at a university. So at Texas we are, but I will say this is the nut that we, I mean, we've been in business like three or four months now. Mm -hmm. um, this is the nut that we uh, haven't cracked. Okay. So we're, we're starting a series of, um, I'll just call them dog and pony shows. Um, and we're going around and meeting with all of the deans and all of the research deans and open source is and just trying to get our uh, an idea of how big our community is and what it is. And we're, we're talking about mapping this community. And then we, we, we would like to get insights into how to, like we have a pathway. So where are the people that we're gonna potentially work with are on the pathway? And then what are sort of like strategies for moving them along the pathway and then really getting campus some good insight into, mm -hmm. into different levels of the community. So that's, I mean, that's our two-year goal and we're, we're, we're heading down it right now. So we're interested, but I can't say we have any expertise. Okay. That's fair. Thank you, Angela. Richard, did you have a comment? Yeah, I would just want to clarify something that I mentioned earlier around sustain. So tomorrow we're having a meeting to talk about like, what can you do with researchers to ask this question? It's like the exact same topic. Um, the thing I would point out is that I'm trying to figure out how can we help all these nascent OSPOs because they're the main people in the academic working group, give stuff to people without every single time having to have an hour long conversation with a researcher to figure out like what we need to do. It's it, we all have the skills or at least, the network where we could find the skills to figure out how to do bespoke sessions for each group 
and say like, okay, we can sit down with you and figure out if you have a business plan or we can figure out if, you know, how to put your spun kit up. But I, I just want to know, like, between all the universities that are represented and between all the academic researchers we know, is there anything we can just hand to people and say, oh, you're an academic? Read this first and then come back to me. So that's kind of what I was trying to figure out for tomorrow. And I want to mention that just because I feel like this is a very, very similar ground. Um, and maybe I should transition and move to something else if it's too similar. <laughs> but that's kind of what I was thinking. I wasn't sure if that's a good comment to make here. I just felt like it, it should be said. It's helpful. So, Richard, you're, is it um, if I can repeat that back just so I understand it? You're, are you look? Um, were you looking for uh, something to um, like a starter kit, something to hand somebody? Yep. For yeah, okay. Um, I don't have anything like that yet, but you know who has shared some things that help um, sort of get uh, an academic. Uh, to a good starting point, who has maybe brand new to open source. Yeah. It, um, Lorena Barba shared some of um, the things that she pointed to that I thought were actually kind of useful. Like um, she had cool. an article from a few years ago. Um, it wasn't super recent, but it had like a kind of like an infographic for like the difference between um, like uh, permissive and copyleft and license compatibility. So kind of at a glance, you can see that like if something's GPL, like it can't go into um, yeah. commercial software stuff like that so um i might let's ping lorena and see that sounds great um i i yeah having that resource would be awesome like i'm trying to figure out like what resources already exist so we can share that could be one of them that sounds excellent i would love that and maybe we update it you know like yeah. i mean maybe it's you know if it's from a few years ago maybe or maybe it's already you know just does its job well i don't know and just along that line i'm seeing mike's comments about the turing way turing way is also excellent but it's also very very long I'm really looking for like a document that we can work on collaboratively and share it together that just says, go to this part of the Turing way, go to this part of Lorena's resource. An um, index of high yes. value assets. Yeah, more like a one pager, but mm -hmm. an index also works, yeah. All right, we're saying, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm, I, it, it's a big topic, but I'll try to be brief. Um, I, I think all of, the suggestions and ideas that have been made are, are excellent. To me, the elephant in the room is trust, right? So academics don't necessarily trust people they don't know. Um, and if, if you've been through the academic process in any way, you, you basically, as a grad student, you end up building trust within your team, your lab, your whatever the cohort may be. And then your supervisor, advisor mentors you conveys that trust to other people, then you become part of this community and you're sort of respected and trusted. It's very different to suddenly build a community with people you don't know. And, and maybe people who don't know anything about your discipline. <laughs> that makes it even harder, right? You're not... Why should I trust this person? So I think one of the things we're going to have to address as a community is how to get the, the, the faculty and students who are producing this code to start relying on people they don't know and may never meet and are not going to bring to a conference and get to know them and say, sure, I now trust you. I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate what you've done. Um, because that's really ultimately going to be necessary for any of this to scale. I, I can state from my experience working with projects funded by CZI that within the scientific community, there is a certain degree of reluctance to align around the notion of community or to universally accept it. So, I mean, I think there is some recognition of these smaller projects that perhaps don't require community and a reluctance to band together under a foundation umbrella in the academic space, at least. I appreciate that that comment, Saeed. Um, it, I jotted it down, particularly because a lot of what we're looking at here on this framework, they're kind of pointed questions with pointed ways to measure and trust is a much larger issue. I don't see um, that necessarily as being one question, but kind of an overarching um, approach. And that might be like a sort of less public playbook that we're building with that, because like, yeah. I think Saeed's spot on with that. He's totally right. Um, but if, I don't know, like, you know, there's things that you put in your one pager and there's things you keep to yourself when like, you know, like this is how we engage with faculty. Um, and maybe it's the, maybe it's the secret playbook that Saeed's building. We'll put together slides for a secret playbook. Wait, just to be clear, I didn't say I was building it. 
It's just yeah. like, <laughs> I'm not going to tell Sloan you're going to produce one. Don't worry. Well, there's yeah <laughs> to the trust point though. There there are many ways the trust or the lack of it is exhibited. Um, so as as we just wrap up here, kind of for the year, I think one of the things in 2024 that I, I'll probably bring forward on the 10th of, of January is it does appear that there are a couple of people, so for example, like Zach and Angela, that might be looking at community um, and encouraging you both to kind of talk openly together about what you're doing at Texas and what you're doing at Stanford, because there's no reason to reinvent what all y'all are doing. In these different spots, I think we had a similar conversation, at least uh, around education, uh, with the work that Mike is doing, the work that Tom is doing. So uh, part of what um, the corporate OSPOs are doing, kind of in our, one of our other working groups, is, is starting to work together and think about some of these issues that are occurring, say, at Microsoft and at GitHub and, you know, how they can be thought about collectively. So um, I, I think I'll encourage this kind of coming from this framework in 2024 just to forecast a little bit um if we could project out a little bit i think i would have a lot more to say in like say march than january okay no that's no i wasn't asking you to do it in january i was just it was me saying this all uh, this is a roadmap issue in january that, yeah that, <laughs> no work between now and then yes yeah, no worry yes exactly <laughs> take a little time for yourself <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry if that came across wrong. So enjoy your uh, enjoy your Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And, and it's good to see everybody. Good to see you all. Bye-bye, everyone. All right. Nice to see care. you all. Bye.